Hello everyone and welcome to another weekly Devo. My name is Andrew. I have the great privilege of being one of the pastors on staff at Well and Being Christ Church. If you're checking out uh, a Devo for the very first time, a very special welcome to you. Well, today I thought I would talk about the topic of forgiveness. Eee, forgiveness. Um, pretty tough topic in scripture, but something that we are certainly called to as Christ followers. Um, and like I said, not the easiest thing by any means, but I do want to read a little bit of scripture to you and then we want to unpack this just a little bit today as we uh, go through our Devo time. So we're in Matthew chapter 18, Matthew chapter 18, and I'm going to look at the parable of the unmerciful servant. The unmerciful servant, the parable of the unmer <laughs> unmerciful servant in Matthew chapter 18 verse 21. So let's read through the story and then I'm going to backtrack and, and look at a couple things here and unpack a couple things. It says, Then Peter came to Jesus and asked, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother or sister when he or she sins against me? Up to seven times, Peter asked. Jesus answered, I tell you, not seven times, but seventy times seven. Or sorry, <laughs> forgive me, seventy-seven times. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven is like a king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. As he began the settlement, a man owed him 10,000 talents, which was actually millions of dollars. <clears throat> Excuse me. A man who owed him 10,000 talents, millions of dollars, was brought to him. Since he was not able to pay, the master ordered that he and his wife and his children and all that had be sold to repay the debt. The servant fell on his knees before him. Be patient with me, he begged, and I will pay you back everything. The servant's master took pity on him, canceled the debt, and let him go. But when the servant went out, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred denarii, which is just a few dollars, by the way. So a hundred denarii, which added up to just a few dollars. He grabbed him and he began to choke him. Pay back what you owe me, he demanded. His fellow servant fell to his knees and begged him, Be patient with me, and I will pay you back. But he refused. Instead, he went off and had that man thrown into prison until he could pay the debt. When the other servants saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed and went and told their master everything that had happened. Then the master called the servant in. You wicked servant, he said. I canceled all the debt of yours because you begged me to. Shouldn't you have had mercy on your fellow servant just as I had on you? In anger, the master turned him over to the jailers to be tortured until he should pay off all that he owed. This is how my heavenly Father will treat each of you unless you forgive your brother from your heart. Now I think verse 35 is is the most important piece of, of the story here in the parable and, and the scripture that we're looking at today. So Matthew chapter 18, verse 35, this is how my heavenly Father will treat each of you unless you forgive your brother from your heart. Now this begs a couple questions and I get asked this a lot and I was... Um, really wrestling through this in, in my own spirit, I guess, so to speak, last night as I was kind of laying in bed, just praying and thinking things over and so forth. And uh, and I get asked this quite a bit. And this question is, this is the question, can we forgive a person who doesn't think they've done wrong, and we think they obviously have, that's really relevant. Um, and by the way, this happens in marriage quite often. <laughs> We're wondering uh, if we should forgive our spouse when our spouse doesn't ask for forgiveness. Uh, and if they don't ask for forgiveness, can forgiveness proceed? Now, I'm using some resources here today in today's devotional. I want to give credit where it's due uh, because those certainly aren't my own thoughts that I'm about to share with you. I, I agree with these thoughts, and that's why I'll be um, sharing this with you. But this is from John Piper. John Piper is quite the uh, author and uh, biblical scholar, kind of theologian, teacher, preacher. Uh, I, I like his stuff. I uh, don't necessarily always agree with him on everything. Is uh, That's hard to find sometimes. But certainly in this area of forgiveness, I think he's got some great things to share with us. 
So let's just start uh, with Jesus' teaching about for forgiveness. So we've looked at a little bit of this. Uh, Jesus teaches several times in different places in the scripture about forgiveness. Uh, and he also said this, he said, forgive us our debts or our sins as we forgive others their debts and or their sins. Uh, and that's in the great um, prayer that Jesus teaches us in Matthew chapter 6. Then Jesus unpacks it a bit more in verses 14 to 15 in Matthew chapter 6. And he says, for if you forgive others their sin, your heavenly father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others, your heavenly Father in heaven cannot forgive you. Now that's that's a big deal. And so we want to pay attention to that and really make note of that. Then Jesus puts it in the parable, which we've just read, this parable of the unmerciful servant. <clears throat> now, Peter had just asked the Lord, how many uh, times should I forgive my brother or sister? And Jesus gives this answer, and it's not actually about 77 times. It's not about the specific number. It's illustrative here. It's um, figurative in terms of uh, a lot of times, and essentially as many times as, as you need to and or as many times as someone would ask. Now, I want to bring a little bit of clarification to that because I don't think um, – Jesus isn't saying in this parable that we're to be doormats. Uh, we're not to be walked on all the time. We're not to be mistreated. We're not to be in abusive relationships. Uh, we're not to put up with that type of behavior. So I want to make that very clear in this. Um, but we do need to be quick to forgive and we need to be quick to offer up reconciliation. Now I'm going to talk a little bit about those two different things in just a moment uh, and very briefly. So we have this uh, parable, um, and the bottom line is, is the answer for Peter here is, is like I said, it's, it's figurative in that we need to do this many times. So this king forgives a debt who is owed to him, and it actually adds up to millions of dollars. Uh, and just off, um, then he goes out and strangles a friend who only owes him a few dollars. Very interesting story that we have here. Now, the king hears about this, and uh, he's obviously not happy about this, and in turn imprisons the guy, and uh, the story goes on. So there's a couple other verses that I just want to point out here. Uh, James says this in James chapter 2, verse 13. He says, for judgment, is without, for judgment is without mercy to one who has shown no mercy. Jesus says in Matthew 5, verse 7, Blessed are the merciful. And we talked about this a couple weeks ago in, uh, in the message time on a Sunday morning. It says, uh, Blessed are the merciful, for they, shall receive, for they shall receive mercy. So in other words, if you are a merciless person, uh, God will also be merciless to you. So something to uh, certainly pay attention. Now, have you ever asked yourself this, what are the defining factors of a true Christ follower? So we know that many, many people call themselves Christians, lots of people go to church, lots of people do good works and this and that. But I think one of the markers of being a true follower of Christ is someone who knows how to forgive uh, in a couple different ways. Forgive when it's really difficult to forgive, uh, but also to be able to forgive people who don't ask for forgiveness. So the answer to that question is yes. Can we forgive people who don't ask for forgiveness? The answer is yes. And in fact, we need to. It's not only yes, we should. We need to forgive people who don't even ask for forgiveness. So can we forgive a person who doesn't think he or she has done wrong and we think that he or she has if he or she doesn't even ask for forgiveness? The answer is yes, we can and we must. We must do our part in the area of forgiveness. This is what Jesus meant, I think, when he said, love your enemies, bless those who curse you, pray for those who abuse you and or insult you, according, and that's Luke chapter 6, verses 27 to 28. Uh, the bottom line is they are still our enemies uh, when we do that. However, uh, they and they haven't asked for forgiveness and they don't think they need it, but we're called to bless them. 
And this is one of the most difficult things to do as a Christ follower is to forgive people when they insult us or hurt us or don't treat us right. Um, and we know that what they've done is, is sinful, but they uh, either don't admit it is or don't care that it is. Um, and so that's bottom line is that's on them. That's not on us. Our responsibility is still to forgive them. Because the opposite of forgiving is holding a grudge. And uh, we don't want to hold grudges. In fact, we want to be a blessing to ourselves. We want to be a blessing to God. And we want to be a blessing to those who won't even forgive us. Now, it is true that the full effect of forgiveness, uh, which is reconciliation, can only happen if the other person wants to be forgiven. So there's a difference between forgiveness and reconciliation. We were all called to forgive and bless our enemies. Not every one of our enemies or not everyone who insults us or hurts us or says something wrong against us is going to admit they've done that and are going to ask for forgiveness. And that's okay because it's our responsibility to forgive them anyway. However, um, our goal is reconciliation, but you can't reconcile with someone on the other side who isn't willing to do that. So we're still called to forgiveness, we're called to reconciliation, but you can't have reconciliation unless the other person or party is, is willing to do that. So it's just kind of a little side note there that I wanted to uh, talk a little about just real briefly. So we don't want to wait for these things to happen. We want to make things right as quickly as we can. Um, we want to, we don't want to wait for them to do their half before we do our half. So we don't want to wait for people um, to just come to us and say, hey, I'm sorry, I should have done that. Uh, we want to be proactive in that. We want to forgive uh, as soon as we can. Uh, and the biggest reason we want to do that is to rid uh, the opportunity for bitterness to set in and or grudges to set in. Um, and that's exactly what did uh, what Jesus did for us on the cross. So we want to keep that in mind as well. So we must renounce revenge and understand that revenge and judgment is the Lord's. The Bible is very clear about that. It's our part to forgive and we can do it whether the person who has wronged us admits they've wronged us or not. We can still forgive them. Uh, one great miracle will happen if you forgive people who don't even ask for it. We're not responsible for the other miracle to happen, which is for them to ask for forgiveness and for the relationship to be reconciled. So I hope that's been helpful today. Again, a very difficult subject. Forgiveness is um, not easy to do but it's absolutely necessary. If you're going to say that you're a Christ follower, if you're gonna say you're a disciple of Jesus Christ, uh, you need to learn how to forgive and you need to do that as quickly as possible. Um, and on the other flip side of that, if you've perhaps, if there's any question that you may have wronged someone, ask them. Uh, just say, is there anything that I've done to offend you or upset you or hurt you, um, whatever it might be, and do your best to, to also be the one who would um, say, well, can you forgive me for that, as I'm truly sorry that that happened. So just, uh, like I said, uh, a tough topic, but I wanted to share that today. I felt it was uh, what the Lord was kind of laying on my heart for this week's Devo. Hope you have a great rest of your week. If anyone needs anything, please don't hesitate to call and, and let me know. Praying for all of you. Love you all. Miss you. Stay safe and we'll be in touch. Bye-bye.